How do wheels work? Seems simple enough, right? Round thing rolls along the ground. But Og the caveman who invented the wheel did not know Newtonian physics. There's a lot of detail and subtlety. And your physics class likely just blew right past it. They never bother covering that in class. So here's a description of how wheels work in detail. All right, what was the point of the wheel? So that you don't have to drag something along the ground, scraping it against kinetic friction the whole way. Wheels let you avoid that, but how does that work? You have stuff sitting on wheels, and the wheel does two things at once. The first thing it does is it rotates, and the other thing it does is it moves. So let's draw that. We have some kind of rotation going on, plus, at the same time, the whole wheel is traveling. What is that going to add up to? Well, it depends. There's three possibilities. Either the wheel is rotating too slowly, too quickly, or just right. Let's suppose this is the wheel. My arm's the ground. And if I don't rotate it, it's just going to be scraping. And this is no better than just dragging it along the ground. But likewise, if it's only turning slowly, it's still scraping. If you get just the right rate of rotation for your speed, then that's going to work smoothly. But if you go too fast, if you're spinning too quickly for your motion, then you're scraping again the other way. How is this going to work out? You want to avoid scraping. You want to avoid kinetic friction. We're using static friction here not kinetic. That's the secret. Friction does not oppose motion. Remember, if your car is stuck in the snow and the wheels are spinning, you're not going anywhere. The reason you're not going is a lack of friction. You use friction to make you move, not just to stop you. Friction is not opposed to motion. Friction is opposed to scraping, which generally means the relative motion of two surfaces. The relative motion is the speed of the rim relative to the axle plus the speed of the axle relative to the ground would make the speed of the rim relative to the ground. And we want the rim to not be scraping on the ground, which means we want its velocity to be zero, which means that this velocity, the speed that it's traveling at, and this rim velocity need to be equal. If they are equal, you are not skidding. If they are not equal, you will be skidding. So you'll leave skid marks. Either you're slamming on the brakes and uh, the wheels aren't turning fast enough and you're scraping along, or the wheels are turning too quickly because you tried to be dramatic in your takeoff or whatever and your wheels are spinning and you're actually being less effective than if you did a steady acceleration with static friction. It's kinetic friction if we're skidding or scraping, and it's static friction if the wheel is working properly, which means this V equals this V, and over here, the total is the axle here has no motion, and we add on v, so the axle's traveling at speed v. That makes sense. It's attached to the car or whatever. The top of the tire is actually going at 2v, and the bottom of the tire is going at 0. Let's think about what that means for a minute. Let's let that sink in. When you're zooming down the highway at 60 miles an hour, your axle is going 60. The top of your tire is doing 120 miles an hour, and the bottom of your tire is stationary with respect to the road. There's massive acceleration going on, which is why this has to be a thick and very sturdy thing. The rim is undergoing huge acceleration the whole time. If you follow a point like a bit of bubble gum or pebble or something stuck in the tire, you would see this motion. So when you're zooming down the highway, you're using static friction unless things are going very wrong. Next useful thing, and this is a big useful thing, when you talk about just rotation, then we have these formulas that x equals r theta, v equals r omega, a equals r alpha, referring to the distance that the rim travels, the speed of the rim, and the tangential acceleration of the rim like how much the rim is going faster and faster. Not the centripetal, that's a separate formula. 
a centripetal is v squared over r, but that points inward. The tangential acceleration points along the same axis as velocity, and that's the part that makes you go faster or slower. Centripetal acceleration makes you turn. Tangential acceleration affects your speed. These formulas work for describing points on a wheel. If you have a, just a spinning disk or whatever, you can find any point on the wheel. Like all the points on the wheel share the same theta, omega, and alpha because it's a solid object and it's rotating. And they ha each point has different x, v, and a tangential based on the radius, how far it is out from the center. But if you use the radius of the tire and the fact that this v matches this v, that means that you can use these same formulas to tell you how far the car traveled, how fast the car is traveling, the acceleration of the car. This is extremely useful. These formulas really have two uses. There's the parts of a spinning disk thing, and then there's if something is on wheels, you can figure out how fast it's going based on how quickly the tires are rotating and how big the tires are. That's how you can put a speedometer on a bike, or a car for that matter to tell you how fast you're going. It's not actually doing like radar ranging, it's just measuring how many times the wheels are rotating and calculating from that. Now there's more to how wheels work than just that because we haven't yet talked about how do you turn a car? How do the tires work in order to make the turn happen? Suppose we have a car running around a circular track. Okay, this is a rear view of it um, and this is the bird's eye view of the same situation. The car is going to run around a circular track. And this is an enlarged view of the car. Now, what are the forces on the car? A lot of people have trouble with this. There's the force of gravity, and that's pointing straight down in this picture. And down in this picture is actually an X, because that's into the board. A normal force pointing straight up, uh, and that would be a circle dot. That's how we indicate something sticking out of the board at us. Now, if those were the only forces, what would happen to the car is, well, if there's no horizontal forces at all, then there's no horizontal acceleration. If there's no horizontal acceleration, that means you have to go in a straight line, which means the car is going to run off the road. Okay. So what's stopping the car from running off the road? I mean, if you hit like a patch of ice or something, you could imagine doing that. The thing that's stopping you from doing that is friction. Now, if you're going in a circle, you know you have to be accelerating. That's even a geometry fact, not even physics, it's geometry. If you are going in a circle, then you are accelerating towards the center with a radial centripetal acceleration, v squared over r. So that has to be an acceleration towards the center, which means there has to be a force pointing towards the center. But what force is it? Centripetal force is not a kind of force, it's just a direction. It's like saying east force. So it has to be one of the ones on our list. And it's not normal, it's not mg. You don't have any ropes on it unless it's the Batmobile. Um, there's no springs, so it's going to have to be friction, as we said. Now, remember, it's static friction, weirdly enough, because the tires are rolling so that the part in contact has no relative motion. So the force of static friction is what's pointing in towards the center. Force of static friction. Okay, so we've deduced that it has to be pointing that way, but how? Exactly how does that work? Because you're not traveling that way, you're accelerating that way, but you're not traveling that you're traveling this way. So what's the deal? What I did to turn the car was I turned the steering wheel. And what the steering wheel did was it turned the tires just a little bit. So let's look at the tires. Bird's eye view. Let's imagine for a moment that we have this view of the tires. The whole point of having the wheel is that it makes motion in this direction really easy. But we're not going in that direction. We're going in that direction. Only slightly different, but that's very important. If our velocity vector is this way, then that velocity vector has two components, right? It has a velocity this way, which is no problem, that's what wheels are for, but it is also trying to move that way a little bit. 
it has a component at right angles to the tire. And this is trying to make the tire skid sideways. And if you've got any traction, that's not going to happen. To prevent that, the force of static friction is preventing the tire from effectively scraping. As it goes like that, it would be sort of scraping to the right of it. So the force of static friction has to point to the left and a little bit down. And so you have overall an inward force. This is the gist of it. The tires roll that way very easily and there's no resistance. Trying to scrape them sideways, huge resistance. So that's what the force of static friction is preventing. It's preventing the relative motion of the tire scraping that way along the pavement as part of its motion like that. That is how static friction can cause the car to turn sideways. Now, about that tangential acceleration. Suppose we have a car that's parked. We put it in drive, we hit the accelerator. What happens exactly? Well, the motor attempts to rotate the tire. Now, if there's all ice or something down here, then the tire is just going to spin in place. And what you have is the bottom of the tire is scraping against the ground. So the tire is essentially scraping like that. Now, if there were friction, the friction would oppose that motion by pushing that way. So let's suppose now we have some traction. We've got static friction. There's no ice. It's gripping the ground. The tire is attempting to go that way. It is trying to shove the ground that way. So the ground reacts by shoving the car the other way. So action and reaction. The tire shoves the ground. The ground shoves the tire. And that motion gets brought to the rest of the car. That motion gets transferred to the entire car. So it is pushing back against the ground that causes the car to shift forward. Now, when the car is traveling along at a constant velocity, then in theory, you don't need any force to keep going. Really, there's air drag. But ignoring that for the moment, the rolling of the wheel essentially means there's no kinetic friction going on. It's static friction, which is not doing any work. It's not costing you any energy. You only need that force when you have to accelerate. And remember, accelerate means speed up, slow down, or turn.